One lingering hope for the past 60 years has been that somehow, someday, the American chestnut tree would recover and return to the forest. Its beauty, its wood, its nutritious nuts have been sorely missed. No other tree could take its place, and thanks to its miraculous resilience, the chestnut tree has hung on to life. You know, the chestnut trees just don't want to give up. No, they're not actually dead, do you know that? They're actually, their root system goes way down, and they're still alive. And every once in a while, they still try to pop up, and the bite kills them. The American chestnut tree is not extinct. It, it sprouts from the base. There are still millions of chestnut trees out there in the woods. I've never seen an American chestnut in its, you know, in its real glory. I've seen the little, I've seen the little scrawny trying to be chestnut trees that come up from an old dead stump. And that, that ability of the chestnut tree to re-sprout from the base uh, is, the, is the hope that we, can, that we can restore the species. I'm the chief scientist of the American Chestnut Foundation. What got me started was walking through the woods with a farmer looking for some stray heifers. And he pointed out a chestnut tree, this was in Connecticut, and told me some of the history of the tree and, and what a boon it would be to farmers and, and, and woodsmen to have it back. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, that'd be a nice thing to do to go back to school and study biology and try to cure the chestnut blight. Oh, I thought I could do it as an undergraduate. I didn't realize it would be a lifetime proposition. <laughs> we started here in 1989 in, in April back crossing the blight resistance of Chinese into American chestnut. And what is back crossing? Well, in, in this case, um, with the American chestnut, we have a tree that was very well adapted to our forest. It, it grew to uh, enormous sizes, over 100 feet tall, uh, five feet in diameter, often way in excess of those figures, and um, made up about 25% of, of, of the trees in, in the Appalachian forests there really haven't been any replacements for it. The Chinese chestnut, which co-evolved with, with the blight fungus over, over in, in China, has resistance to the disease, but it's unable to grow well in our woods. But it does have that resistance to blight. So we're trying to transfer that resistance from Chinese into American chestnut, but otherwise retain all the characteristics of, of the American chestnut. And um, so, so to do that, we cross the two trees, get a tree that's half Chinese and half American. And then back cross, um, these are a sexual cross, so you get a nut and you grow up the nut and, and until it fl and you get a little seedling and wait until it flowers. And then you can then back cross that again to another American chestnut. Um, and um, the first hybrid between the two species is half Chinese and half American. And then that first back cross to American chestnut would be one quarter Chinese and three quarters American. The second back cross would cut it to one-eighth Chinese and um, the remainder seven-eighths American, and a third back cross one-sixteenth Chinese and fifteen-sixteenths American. Generally three cycles of back crossing is enough to recover the recurrent type, which in this case is the American chestnut. By crossing two trees that are, for instance, fifteen-sixteenths, then some of those progeny have a chance of inheriting only genes for blight resistance, and none for susceptibility. We are starting to put trees out into the forest to see whether or not um, they thrive in the forest and whether or not they have adequate blight resistance to live a long time. And we've been doing that since 2009. The trees put out in 2009 are just now starting to get blight and um, we'll get an idea of, of how much resistance they have. Well, the way we've tested all of our materials, which is to um, inoculate them with, with the blight fungus and, and to see how they do, and then also we can inoculate their progeny with the blight fungus um, and, and so evaluate the parent based upon the performance of its progeny. I'm fairly optimistic now that we can get the tree out in the woods where it can reproduce on its own without dying from blight. And that will enable it to start evolving on its own. We've been able to capture um, a tremendous amount of genetic diversity from the American chestnut. So essentially our, our trees will be the foundation stock
for, for further development of American, of American chestnut from Maine down to Georgia and, and Alabama.